a new report about trends, the future, and media. It's not fake news. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Amy Webb, founder and quantitative futurist at the Future Today Institute. Welcome, Amy. Hey, it's great to be back. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you back, and it's that time again uh, that we're going to talk about your report. But first, explain what your mission is at the Future Today Institute. Sure. So uh, our job is to collect data and uh, model out uh, emerging trends and use those trends to create scenarios. And the purpose of all of this work uh, is to try to understand what might be plausible in the future so that we can make better decisions in the present. So we don't make predictions, uh, we make connections. FTI's annual trends reports have garnered more than seven and a half million views. You just released a new annual study titled 2019 Journalism, Media and Industry Trends Report. What was the motivation for starting these trends reports? Sure, so we've been producing an annual report uh, for 11 years. And that report, which now covers 20 different industries and technology from all different uh, areas, comes out in the spring. A few years ago, I started an industry-specific report um, that just uh, does some deep analysis around a set of trends covering just one industry. And in this case, it's the news, media, and, and tech sector. Um, and the reason for this was that with the tectonic shifts happening, in the, in the media and tech space, um, it really seemed like it was important for the folks making strategic decisions to be armed with actionable insights and information as they uh, map out their strategies. Um, and I open sourced all of the, the Future Today Institute's research methodology tools, everything a couple years ago. So this is really a labor of love. Um, we don't get paid for this report in any way uh, for the news and media industry. It's, it's, it's for them to use. Um, in terms of uh, some key takeaways from this year that were surprising, um, you know, one of our key findings has to do with blockchain and distributed ledger technology. And I know everybody's sick of hearing about ICOs and uh, cryptocurrencies, and there's a lot of hype and not a lot of action. You know, we come at this from a different angle. So we're looking at distributed ledger um, as a real possibility to build authenticity and trust in a news media ecosystem, which is unfortunately um, maligned by various actors all around the world. Um, so, so we see that as, as a real plausible um, scenario going forward. But we also see that as a new way to generate revenue. So another key finding had to do with um, what I like to call benevolent malware. So this is intentionally giving somebody else access to your mobile device. And I think pretty soon the smart devices in your home uh, while you sleep and they can harness that compute power and distribute it and resell it to others. Um, that revenue can then be used to, to do things like uh, pay for subscriptions or pay for podcast subscriptions or whatever it might be as an alternate to uh, the ad model, which has been broken and isn't working anymore. So, so we, we saw a lot of promise and, and the blockchain section alone um, has a whole bunch of trends. We also wrote a non-technical primer um, explaining in a nutshell what exactly blockchain is, blockchains are, what distributed le you know, ledger technology is, what are tokens, what are ICOs, what is all this stuff? Um, we, we specifically wrote it for people who are not techie um, so that they can have smarter conversations. You mentioned blockchain, you mentioned Internet of Things. What about artificial intelligence or mixed reality? Sure. So, you know, AI is something we've been covering, but I, I don't call AI a tech trend. Um, uh, artificial intelligence is certainly a buzzword, uh, but it is the third era of computing. So the first era of computing was, uh, uh, was tabulation. The second was programmable systems. We've been in this third era now for a while. But within AI, there's a lot to be paying attention to. So some of that has to do with um, technical developments like generative adversarial networks, which are now sort of like an automated Turing test where two systems can uh, compete to create um, content that's original. Um, so that's sort of interesting. 
but there's also a lot of consolidation that's happening within the space, which is important for folks to be paying attention to. Um, so AI is certainly a, a, a big piece of what we're paying attention to. With, and within AI, there's, there's also a non-technical primer um, that explains what AI is. Uh, but I think that we've got something like 30 or 40 trends within that space. Um, you know, one of the a really promising area that we're paying attention to now is sort of a, it sort of branches off from AI and that's spatial computing. Um, so this is the idea that uh, any space that you're in becomes a computable surface. Um, and, and a great example of this is Magic Leap, which I know is the company that everybody loves to smack talk about. Uh, however, um, having used Magic Leap and followed them and read every single one of their patents, um, I think it, it would be wise of everybody to give those folks some time to work and develop the technology without expecting a product every five minutes. Um, the, the smart glasses that I have seen and used uh, and, and the mixed reality environment that's been built to me is very analogous to the first wave of internet connected phones. Um, the spatial computing is going to change everything, and, and it's certainly something that folks in the media, tech, and entertainment space ought to be paying attention to. You offer great insight and research and really help educate the media community and those of us who are interested in the fake news era. What advice would you offer to those who wish to monitor trends and signals in their own domains? Sure. So I think the biggest piece of advice that I might be able to offer is to look in, you know, look outside your own industry. So uh, we're living in an era now where um, basically every industry sector and every technology has a lot of different dependencies. So if you are looking at the future, for example, of AI as it relates to your own industry, and you're not really forcing yourself to think broadly about other topics, or how AI might relate to some seemingly completely unrelated industry. It's a little bit like looking at the future through a pinhole. So you need to significantly broaden your aperture. Uh, and, and that's a rough one because it may seem like it's a waste of time to think about how AI and public health intersect if you're a gaming company, for example. Um, but but, but uh, you know, that, that's, that's the smartest thing to do going forward. Um, and the other piece of information I would relay is uh, that outliers oftentimes mean a lot. They're, they're, outliers are you know, oftentimes weak signals that become something over time that we dismiss. So uh, in my field, if there's data to back it up, outliers can be pretty meaningful and they can be really good signposts as you're looking at the future. Amy Webb, founder and quantitative futurist at the Future Today Institute, shedding light on what's happening in the trends in media. Thanks so much for joining me. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more about your work or get a copy of the report, how can they do that? Sure. So all of our reports are available on our website. They're free to download. So if you go to futuretodayinstitute.com, uh, you can go to the blog there, you can go to our research page, and everything is there for you to download along with a bunch of other resources. Thanks again, Amy. Amy Webb is definitely somebody to follow. But if you want to follow me and more of my interviews, you can do that too, right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic. Or maybe go to my website, tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.